We are recording. So I'm here with uh, Mike Patterson of Sasquatch Ontario. And I'm without further ado, I'm going to start a, a quick intro I did and, and then ask a number of questions. This is my first interview, so I don't have a formal method or anything. So I guess I'll just start the uh, video and then I've got a bunch of questions lined up to if, if you want to pass on any questions, if you don't want to answer any, that's cool. So you ready? Yep, no problem. I'm I'm pretty much an open book. So great to have you on, by the way. It's thanks, just thanks, Martin. Thank you for your time. And all right, here we go. Hopefully this works well. Add the stream. I think it's just gonna come right up and start playing once I do this. Okay. Mike Patterson is one of the most knowledgeable people out there on the subject of Sasquatch. He has a YouTube channel with over 66,000 subscribers where he shows evidence, talks about this enigma, and shares some interesting experiences from others. Mike's experience started off with a sighting as a young boy, and then later in life, he was drawn to explore this subject again, where he experienced vocals, knocks, etc. Eventually, Mike was contacted about possible Sasquatch activity around a property, and his experiences became what I would say is nothing less than amazing or perhaps mind-blowing. He has some incredible experiences with footprints, recordings, and very up-close and personal activity, some that might blow your mind. If you follow Mike, you likely realize he respectfully refers to Sasquatch as masters of energy and that they are a people not monsters. He will also share about lots of high strangeness, supernatural and paranormal activity. He's not the only person talking about this either. The latest missing 411 from David Politis is about the UFO connection. Steve Istall of How to Hunt also recently acknowledged that connection and he has shared much high strangeness through his email shares as it seems it can't be avoided. Scott Carpenter talks about orbs, UFOs, and their paranormal abilities. And Ron Moorhead of Sierra Sounds basically says an understanding of quantum physics is needed to understand Sasquatch. Even Matt Moneymaker of the BFRO has talked about glowing eyes, not eye shine, mind speak, etc. Just this past week, Mike gave a public talk on this fascinating subject at McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario. To quote Mike, I hope this to be the first of many more opportunities to share my experiences and what I've learned about this enigma. I share truth and a gift given by the hairy folk to help dispel the myths and fear that accompany this subject. With that, I would like to formally welcome you, Mike. Do you have anything you'd like to add to that? Like just on those points at all, or should I just ask you some questions? Um, yeah, you covered it pretty good there. Um... You know, it, it, as this subject evolves, more and more people are realizing that, uh, yeah, there's a part of this that makes no logical sense. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, that term that I've coined, that masters of energy, this this is what will become known as as we evolve into the sub, you know, as this subject grows. And that's, yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah, I liked your intro. That's cool. Thank you. Yeah, I, I tried to express how I feel that way. I feel I'm better that way than speaking direct. So can you talk about your feelings towards them, your understanding of them in the beginning when you first got started? Um, when I first started, I had a lot of fear. Definitely. Mm. Lots of fear. Mm -hmm. um, you know, before the situation with, uh, with Dwayne's property and, you know, being involved in that over the past 10 years before that even happened. Uh, I, I would go to the spot. I, I spent about four years going to the place where I had my initial close vocal encounter. And, you know, I, sometimes I'd be going there at night all gung ho and, you know, by myself and I'd pull into this parking lot. It was about 220 hectares, that patch. Uh, you know, there was patches of woods in, in the area. Uh, cut up by divided by uh, roadways and that right yeah. so I would check them all out but I would pull into the parking lot all gung-ho ready to go in get out of my car and walk up to the 
head of the trail and chicken out. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, and I'd sit there in the parking lot for a while and I was, uh, yeah, I was very afraid, man. I had a lot of fears. So uh, when, when it uh, got to the situation with Dwayne's, I had the fear of a tree or a rock being dropped on my tent. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, I've had fear of other wildlife, bears, that sort of thing. Yeah. And, and that fear is still there, right? So, yeah, there, there was a lot of fear to work through. But at, at this point, I'm pretty good with it. And I'm, I'm very comfortable with Sasquatch presence at this point. Very comfortable. Gotcha. All right. I thought possibly, but I, I was, I've always wanted to ask you that. So, all right. I guess I'll go to the next one. All right. Can you talk on how you suspect Sasquatch may have had something to do with your interest in them? I think I can relate to that. When I was spending time in the woods, you know, I bought some nice camera gear and and taught myself photography. And, you know, I'd be going into the woods by myself for the most part, looking for National Geographic shots, right? Mm -hmm. Actually, I got pretty good with a camera there, photographing wildlife and that. So one day I had an epiphany and I didn't realize then, but... Now, after so many years of interacting with them and seeing their abilities, highly telepathic, highly evolved in in their understanding of consciousness to the and their intelligence, you know, are they all like that? I don't know. It doesn't. Perhaps they're like us, you know, like some people are a hell of a lot smarter than other people. Mm. I I don't know, but it seems that way. The family I've been dealing with and interacting with, you know, they're they're very intelligent and they possess these abilities that uh, have shown me that if I look back, it seems that they planted the thought, basically. Mm. You know, suddenly I'm, you know, because it was last thing on my mind or, you know, it wasn't whatever. It wasn't even on my mind. I don't think it just one day I'm like, hey, you know, I get all this camera gear. Why don't I start looking for Sasquatch? And. I used to think that one had to go to the West Coast. You know, the last thing I would ever think of is, oh, they're in Ontario. Mm. But now that I look at it, Ontario is huge, right? We got a quarter million lakes here. We got, uh, mm. I think it's been 22 hours to drive from the bottom to the top end. It, it's it's wow. a big, big province. There's a, a lot of forest here in, in Ontario. So, mm. but still, I never related that to Sasquatch presence, you know, it just, it was always a West coast thing. So where that thought came from, I, I don't know for sure, but I believe that it was planted, you know, to, to put me on this path. So. That makes sense. Wow. So you, you say that you can relate. I'm just wondering. I just, I had this sort of, it just came over me. Like this, I had to go find out about them and I don't know where that came from. Maybe, maybe a year and a half ago. Yeah, I just, I don't know. And I couldn't get enough of listening about them. I know Steve Istall talks about, you know, I'd, I'd rather not see one again. I personally, I was really fascinated and I wanted to just know about them. And they visited me the first night I was at a campsite very clearly. They, I, I'm sorry, your voice broke up there. They, they what at a campsite? They visited me. Okay. They made their presence very known right away. Cool. What happened? Uh, There was three tree breaks from two different directions. By the second one, I mean, on the first one, I was pretty sure. On the second one, about 10 minutes later, I knew for sure. Uh, Because I'd already heard about the area in general. And um, yeah, and then for the rest of the night, I heard little twig breaks. And but yeah, that was that was something. A night I won't forget. (laughs) They do do a lot of tree breaks and um, stick breaking. When, when I set out my audio, I have a place where I like to go pitch my tent. You know, I'll go there alone a lot. And when I put my audio, I have my routine. I'll place an audio recorder, maybe about a hundred feet or so from my tent, somewhere in that range, and far enough but close enough that I can, you know, hear. But they'll they'll, they'll approach as well, right? And and I get to, sometimes I've had six hours of constant stick breaking and rock clacking and I. You know, blatantly show their presence right and even though some i could go home and and wonder if i had any activity if they were there and then i'll plug in my audio and say okay you guys were there the whole time 
So I don't always know, right? Yeah. But they do do that a lot. So what you mentioned with the stick breaks. I have had some, I had somewhere, uh, I, cause I had stayed in one location for a number of months and I, you know, that's all I really was there for in a sense. And you'd eventually pick up sort of, I guess, habits or, although they don't really seem to have patterns, but there would just be some nights where there was a lot of sounds, some night, lots of nights there was nothing, but you know, there was a couple where there was a lot of sounds, just objects being thrown. I felt a little bit of humor behind some of it. It was kind of funny, but. Humor is, de humor is definitely consistent with their activity and, mm. and, and just because you don't, hear anything or it might seem quiet doesn't mean they're not watching you right i started to think that after a while yeah yeah <laughs> all right go to the next question yeah this is great thank you i'm i'm hoping it's recording all right yeah, it is it it's recording okay so how did you decide to solo camp next to a structure um, just even just solo camping, it's uh, in, in an area with activity. When, when I first found out about uh, the stuff going on with Dwayne's property, uh, I knew it was what I was looking for. And I knew from the first night, you know, that they had Sasquatch presence there. And yeah. when you're looking for it and suddenly you, you're given this opportunity and, and it's a golden opportunity to you know, investigate and develop that interaction. There's, like I said, there's a lot of fear, right? But what do you do? Yeah, you either you're, you're given this opportunity, you either push through the fear or what else, you know, you're going to walk away. If you're going to walk away, you might as well just shut it all down and forget about it. Cause. Wow. Um, so I just pushed through fear basically. You know, I had <laughs> like, I, I had some moments where I thought my, Heart was going to burst out of my chest. It was pounding so hard. So but I just kept pushing, right? Kept pushing through it. So, Wow. Uh, just want to let you know, I, I can't out of necessity with money. This was something on my mind, of course, but there was not just purely a interest in this that was my only. I also had a bit of necessity happening while I was camping. But knowing that you survived that really helped me. I, Cause I had at one point seen your video with the tent and I knew you were alone. And I knew I was, I, when I went to this place, I told you, but I did not know if they were real for sure. I was pretty convinced from hearing a lot, but it's different when you hear, it's all fun and games until a tree breaks in the middle of the night, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but that really helped me. I prob I don't know if I would have stayed if I didn't get through to someone that night. Cause I was, I just didn't know. Yeah, understandable. I remember I had that tree, huge, huge sound, man. When that tree was pushed down, maybe a couple hundred feet from my tent, and it was dark. I was alone, and I was fine with it. But you know, at that point, right, I didn't have any fear really. I was, I was just wondering, like, why that happened. I don't know, but I didn't have any fear of being hurt or anything like that. But I would, I would think anybody else. Put in that situation, hearing that tree uh, go down with the roots popping and all that, that meant, man, that thing hit the ground so hard. It, the sound it made was just massive, and yeah, um, it would probably scare most people out yeah. of there, right? But, I heard your video. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> man! All right, thank you. Bob. I really appreciate this. No problem. Can you talk about your first night camping and how they tried to scare you? Um, I think it was Dwayne wasn't involved yet. He was, I, you know, I was invited to the property and I was basically given free reign to come and go as I wanted. No, not in the cottage. I was pitching my tent on his property. Mm -hmm. And there was a, there was another guy involved at that point from the beginning for, for a while until I found out he brought a gun in. Mm. Yeah, then that, you know, that really pissed me off. But mm. um, the, that first night that I had spent in my tent there, I remember uh, there's an incline there. So I don't know, maybe it goes up 100, 150 feet and then it levels, you know, plateaus there. And 
and I would set my tent back there. So I had him accompany me up to my tent late at night there, and he waited till I was, you know, all set up. I had audio running outside my, my tent and that, and then I got in my tent, and I heard him walking through, you know, through the leaves back down the hill, get in his vehicle, and he fires up the engine to get some heat into his car because it was a bit chilly. And I, I remember I had a, it was like a, almost like a fox like chattering that started up. Mm. It was like right outside my tent wall. And I, I was freaked out. I was like, what the hell is that? And then when that quieted down, suddenly there's a barred owl, mm. you know, making this really loud call. And that sounded at, right outside my tent wall. And, and I was freaked out, I, you know, and when I played the audio back, there was a, a fair sized tree limb that was, you know, it was dead, but it still attached to the tree and it got snapped off. Wow. And my, my microphones were right there. So they're going to capture every sound. And that thing should have hit the ground. And mm. it didn't. It didn't. Well, it was laying on the ground, but it didn't hit the ground. It was placed there with a hand because it was laying on the ground. And, and uh, when I played the audio back, you know, I hear the crack. I hear it get snapped off. And then that's it. And it's like, okay, well, then it's placed down quietly. So I, I found a pile of human type looking feces, maybe about 30 feet from my tent in the morning that, that looked fresh. And I, I collected that. And I, I remember I took it, to, took it home, fro you know, threw it in the freezer and ended up driving it across the border at the time and shipping it to Melba Ketchum. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, I, I did that. I crossed the border so it wouldn't get held up in customs, right? Gotcha. And, and, and thaw out. You know. <laughs> yeah, here, here you go, customs guys. That'd be a real shitty time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How do you like that one? <laughs> um, so I, I did that. Nothing ever became of that because I was basically told that's it's difficult to pull anything from that. Um, at this point, I don't care about DNA. I really don't want to give science anything. Yeah. Um, as far as DNA goes. But uh, so, yeah, the first night, I, there was a lot of fear going on there. I definitely had their presence, 100%. Mm. And it, there's a, the, their presence has been with us on every visit. Wow. From day, from day one, over 10 years. So, but, That's a, yeah, a lot of fear. A lot of fear that first night. I relate. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Can you talk about your experience? And I did try to go like in an order here, sort of. You did talk a little about your experience over. It, it's just time, really. It's time and just keep doing it and keep pushing and seeing it evolve and unfold and just kind of going with the flow and, and trusting, you know, and trusting the situation. It, for me, it was, you know, my mentality was do or die. It's like, okay, I got the real thing. and. I'm just, I'm just doing this. If I die, oh, well, okay, I die. But I'm, you know, I dove in head first and, and I just kept doing that. You know, there was a lot of fear with Dwayne as well, of course, you know, that I, I don't see why anybody wouldn't fear, you know, considering what we were going through. I know I helped, you know, I helped him work through that as well. It's just time, really time and, and continuous interactions and activity and just being present and, and um, allowing yourself to uh, you know just evolve through it you know, like I said it's just time right and realizing that you awoke each morning right yeah <laughs> yeah still here okay so in this one I so you probably know the you did actually clip on this recently on that how to hunt video with the screaming and I've been wanting to do this, so I'll just read it the way I wrote it. I saw how you responded to that terrifying camping video on how to hunt. Can you talk on how Neff acted boisterous this way and how you look at that camping video? And before you answer, I actually don't remember what I put after this. Okay, yeah, so I just have a little clip from that. I did a video as well a couple weeks ago here's a little clip of that from a video i made the video is titled 
Terrifying video audio captured while camping. Here is a section of it. Listen to the vocal sound right before he says, everybody get in my truck. Everybody get in my truck. But then it gets even more interesting. There is another vocal in the How to Hunt video I noticed while listening. It sounds a bit like, ooh ah. Here it is. Everybody get in my truck. Here it is once more in the How to Hunt video. Then two more times here. That was not an elk. So that's the next I had. So I wanted yeah. to know your thoughts because I've I saw somewhere maybe on your Facebook, where you didn't interpret that as a lot of people do, and that really fascinated me. And you said somewhere it reminds me of how nephews act boisterous. Um, first of all, those like those vocals sound so close to his voice, it's so similar that I believe that's a you know a young male, just wow. like uh, just like he was um, when this started out. He was 17 years old. I found that out through asking them questions, but that video. I see no, um, there's no malevolence. There's no anger there. It's just a, a young male Sasquatch doing his thing and, and showing off basically. Wow. For me, if I was there it, with the knowledge I have now, that for me, that's a golden opportunity to, you know, reach out and call out to him or wow. you know, even walk a little closer and, and just try to interact. Wow. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have any fear whatsoever at that point to be in that situation with those campers. Uh, I can understand their point. You know, they've not, <laughs> not dealt with this. Right. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it's just uh, understanding their behavior and, you know, they're boisterous and, and they're funny and it's just kind of showing off. There's, if they want you to leave, you'll know it. They'll, mm -hmm. they'll, you know, they can make you leave without you even knowing what's going on. Wow. So, yeah, that situation uh, was just, um, it's just their antics, you know, just a matter of understanding their behavior. And, you know, he's just having a good time. Wow. That's how I, that's how I see it. That, I, I think that's just so profound. It's, it's uh, to me, that's just enlightening hearing you say that. And hearing you say that, I can see where you're coming from. And of course, I don't know if I could even sit through that either, but I get it. Wow. Thank you. So here's the next one I uh, was asking. Um, I sort of might know the answer a little bit because I have listened to you, but I just wanted to ask you, why don't you do knocks, et cetera, anymore? I've learned that once you connect to them, it doesn't matter where I go. I've, you know, I've gone for a walk in the woods, down around the corner here, driven my car uh, down the road and gone into the woods. My car's locked and I, I come back and, the things wrapped around my rear view mirror again that's happened a few times or you know or there's a stick pulled through my door handle or um just showing their their presence right mm. once you connect to them i think it's all through consciousness they can find you anywhere so yeah i i, I don't i don't really feel a, a need to to wood knock or anything like that anymore or when i when i go camping to my other spot where I like to pitch my tent. I don't go, I don't have to go deep in the woods. Not at all. I mm -hmm. just show up and, and I, you know, I might go for a walk in that, but I'm not really looking for anything. Mm -hmm. They always come, they always show up. They always come to me. Right. Okay. So, you, you know, you're not really going to find them. Yeah. It's uh, if you're in an area where they're, they frequent, um, there's a good chance they're coming to check you out. Thank you. I can't wait to hear this again because I'm I'm learning a lot too right now. All right, next one. Do you have any suggestions for dealing with them around property? Um, you mean if it's your own property, like somebody's? Yeah. And they have their presence. Like someone's house, maybe they hear stuff and they're don't know what to do. They think something's happening. Maybe they realize it might be them. Yeah, just any 
I know some people have just are afraid and don't know what to do. Yeah, you know, the fear is understandable. If you start seeing sign like footprints or greasy hand marks on windows or, you know, or getting wood knocks or um, vocalizations, that sort of thing. Uh, if you start getting slaps on the walls of the house, bangs, that sort of thing, they're just, they're, they're showing their presence. They're mm. reaching, they're reaching out to you, actually. Wow. Uh, from my, what I gather, there's nothing to fear because they're reaching out to connect to you. Okay. Um, you can just try talking, like the, try talking out loud or even in your head, whatever. Um, talk out loud like they're standing right there listening to you. You know, you don't have to yell or anything. Just talk like they would be standing right there. Let them know your thoughts and and feelings and can always leave a gift for them. You, you know, try you can try reaching out showing that you're aware of them and things tend to develop slowly, you know, over time, they're very secretive. They're very, uh, they, you know, they all differ. They're, they're a human type, they're individuals as we are. So they all have their own personalities. If they're on your property and you know, there, to me, there's not nothing really to fear. If you're going into say an area in the middle of nowhere and you run into them, in a situation like that, and there's some aggression being shown, like maybe those ones are out in that remote area because they don't want to be around humans. But those that are around humans, I don't think there's any worry. My experience, anyways. Thank you. The property owner who reached out to you, how did they know or suspect that Sasquatch were around? Um, they suspected for about five years prior. Wow. So there were, you know, there were things that would happen. I remember one story Dwayne told me him and his girlfriend were, out, were on a snowmobile and, and there was a pair of glowing red disembodied eyes that were following them, mm. were keeping, keeping up with them, you know? Wow. So, yeah. And, and he's whatever flying on this snowmobile. And so uh, things like that. I remember his dad, uh, Bill, he passed a few years back, but um, Bill was, uh, he had a sighting and that was kind of the final thing to, before I got invited in there. So he sat up in his bed uh, one morning and he, and one of them was standing right outside the window. I had his back to him. Wow. He was standing, so he saw him standing outside the window. Wow. And, you know, he got, I remember he said he got up, went to the bathroom, come back and then you know, was gone. Right. But uh so there was that visual there. I think, uh, yeah, just like little stories over the years of strange stuff happening. And, okay. um, but it was basically that visual, which was the, the catalyst for calling somebody in. Gotcha. Wow. Can you speak on anything you have in mind with what you have referred to as subtle teachings? I think I relate to this. You once refer to subtle stuff, like they are inviting us to pay attention, stuff 99.99% of people would likely miss. I've learned that they, they know what we focus on and they tend to use that to show presence in, in different ways. It seems endless, you know, the, the variety in which they do that. The one that I tend to use as an example would be uh, this spot that I go pitch my tent. I remember I was, I went in for a visit and it was in the fall. There was a lot of mushrooms popping up and, uh, you know, I took notice of this. So I was going back and forth to my vehicle following the same path back and forth to my vehicle and just getting my gear. And I, you know, I just got there and, and I noticed these mushrooms. So I, I make one trip into camp. And I can't remember if it was on the way back to the vehicle or, you know, from the vehicle to camp. But, you know, it's not it's a very, very short walk. But suddenly there is a freshly picked mushroom right in the center of the trail that I know 100 percent was not there, was sitting upside down, just picked. And okay. I had just focused on that. Mm. A lot of the stuff is very there's a lot of vocals that happen that I would not hear. Mm. If I didn't have audio running, oh, okay. um, stuff's very subtle. I'll get a lot of uh, disembodied voices, um, EVPs, whatever. Sometimes I do hear them. 
Sometimes I don't. There's been many where I've heard them and Dwayne doesn't catch them. And, uh, and I'll say, did you hear that? And, you know, and he didn't. And then I'll say, well, I bet you it'll be on the audio. And sure enough, it is on the audio, right? Okay. There's, yeah, it's a little, they, they tend to do little things that um, they'll, they'll put it in front of your face. Mm-hmm. But it still might be subtle that most people might just dismiss it. You know, a lot of people might notice it, but they'll dismiss it. They'll dismiss mm. it. You know, it's something small or, you know, might kind of uh, have them scratch their head for a sec and, and then they move on and forget about it, right? Interesting. Thank you. <laughs> That's profound to me. Uh, I don't know what other people think of that if they thought of it, but okay. So I did sort of refer to this. Do you think not having need to see them helped your experience yeah i you know at this point i, I would love a face-to-face encounter i'd love to shake neff's hand um mm. uh, i want to see them i've had glimpses i know what neff's face looks like clearly wow and you know i are they testing my patience 10 years now i don't know I've learned that I'm watched. They've told me that I'm watched by bad humans. Mm. And um, I know that Neff hides because of bad humans. I've learned that. Um, so maybe there's a, maybe there's a reason along those lines of why I'm not given a, you know, really good visual. I don't know. Okay. Uh, I've been trying to find that out, but I guess it's more of a want to see, not a need. So I've just, accepted you know what they give me and and that's it i just you know i have no control over it, what they want to share with me so i ask sure i ask you know often enough yeah and um i'm just grateful for what they do give when you have a marble dropped right into your hand or you feel them touch your head or you know poke you or that sort of thing or even vocalize right beside you um it's just constant stuff like that that's it's so extremely blatant but i can't see them gotcha i have had glimpses where i've been given physical contact like you know touched in the shoulder back or whatever and i i've swung my head around and seen a dark mass that wow. just disappears instantly and i'm only nodding because i hear you and i've heard you speak on this but i'm not nodding because i have had those experiences I definitely have not. <laughs> that's that's amazing. There was a one time I remember Dwayne and I were sitting in chairs outside, and we're outside the forest, right? We're, we're on his driveway. The forest is right in front of us. We're watching it, and um, sometimes I would get I would stand up just to try and entice some <laughs> some activity. And um, one time I stood up, I walked a few feet, you know. So Dwayne's uh, basically in front of him, whatever six ten feet from him if that. And and I remember the one time he's, he commented suddenly this dark black mass. He couldn't see me anymore. He, I disappeared because wow. of this dark mass that's basically standing right behind me. And I remember I got poked in the side when he said that. So wow. one, of them, one of them showed up. I couldn't see it, right? Because he was behind me, but Dwayne saw. Oh my and, God. And then, uh, then it was gone, you know, poked me in the side and then poof, it's gone again. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> Can you explain how you came to sense friendliness? And I, I sort of ask you, I also said, how did you feel about them at first? I, I, well, I kept an open mind. I didn't know what I was dealing with. So I've always kept an open mind. You know, a lot of people in this subject do not do that. You know, the, if you try to tell them they're interdimensional or that sort of thing, they're just, nope. Completely, yeah. strictly biological, flesh and blood, that is it. And it's not it. They are flesh and blood, but, uh, you know, masters of energy. Mm. Uh, the intelligence that I was dealing with, I remember one of the first things, they placed this old plastic ice cream toy thing, <laughs> like the, the, the top of a, looked like, you know, like fake ice cream cone thing. It was the top of it, like the ice cream cart, and they had placed it on the back of my vehicle to show their presence because I'd stepped outside and, you know, it was very subtle but blatant, you know, just not in your face and a very soft approach. Mm. 
so yeah it just th their approach is very um you know you, you you question how you know how is this going on how are we not seeing them just the way they take their time very um and it seems very methodical on their part too mm. there's very uh there, there's an intention there to make contact and but it's on their their rules how they do it right so That's yeah true. i just you know there there was no no malevolence or anything like that so i just just rolled with it and you know it seemed seemed fine so that's so cool i mean just that little ice cream example i i mean almost that alone seems friendly should give me one second i think it's right here yeah oh really yeah it's just <laughs> oh that's that, so that that's thing they place that on the back of the vehicle yeah wow that's so yeah. cool. i got that sitting on the shelf with a bunch of marbles you know to me it's almost like them saying we are friendly or we want to be friendly. That's sort of how I would interpret that. Fun, nice. Their <laughs> understanding, uh, you know, of consciousness and energy I've learned is just, it's absolutely mind blowing. So they know that I speak publicly. They know what I share. Mm. And I like, personally, I believe this was done with purpose you know, on their, on their part, because mm. they, they've kept giving and, and I've kept sharing. And I think it's to help dispel myth and, and fear, you know, just sharing the experiences, interacting with their people. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. It, it, because there's a lot of misconception, I think out there, um, they're, they're misunderstood their behavior and that they are wild. Mm -hmm. And, but, uh, from my understanding, we're not being murdered by them or killed or and it's, you, the, you, it's the humans you got to worry. Yeah, no Sorry. kidding. No, I just, um, you made me think of Kathleen, the late Kathleen Odom, where the sense that you received through her, through them, was they really liked what you are about. And it, the impression I received was they, I don't know how in depth they went in the process of making it come about with you maybe they guided all of it but um she for one through them really passed the message they're very happy with you they like your heart and you you're not afraid to speak the truth about them is what she kind of passed along and uh here you are i'm new to you i'm i'm only i've only been around this for like a year but it's if i if you look into this a little ways it's you can't avoid the fact that you have been attacked a lot oh yeah and you're still standing right there saying the same thing. I've looked at your comments from 10 years ago, and you sound the same right now as you did then. Almost. Yeah, when you when you get this close and you're putting this stuff out there, yeah, it's, it's funny. At this point, I, I don't care if people think I'm nuts. They've given me so much supporting evidence, so you know, I'm, I'm very confident because of that. Yeah. If I didn't, if I didn't have that, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't be uh, putting it out like I, I do. I don't think. But uh, they have been very supportive. And yeah, I just kind of got to the point where I don't care what anybody thinks about me. You know? Love it. Yeah. Inspires me. I'm full on batshit crazy. Me too. <laughs> I'm proud of it. I wear that as a badge of honor. <laughs> yeah. Wow. This is one I've wondered about for a number of reasons. Do you feel being excited about the branch break? in the beginning of one of your videos may have helped with having more activity tonight as opposed to doubting that it was them. That would have been probably a much older video, I'm thinking. Yeah, there. I you probably wouldn't remember, but you heard one little break and, and it seemed to me that you guys, you and who you were with, were excited. Now, I'll, I'll add something. I was watching something and someone heard I think it was a tree crash, a couple knocks, and then they said, um, we didn't see who did that, so let's not assume that it, you know everything is Sasquatch. And then they said, the rest of the evening was dead silent. And I just, I, it's like, I wonder if they like when you're excited at the possibility that it might be them. I think so, yeah. I, th I think so. They they want us to be happy. They want us to be excited. They want us to connect to nature. I remember not too long ago, 
I would watched a two-part video of some guys who went into Alaska and that, and they were doing the same old futile approach, you know. And um, I, 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 tr I left a comment trying to trying to help them a little bit. <laughs> the guy attacks me, right? Called me a hoaxer and that. Um, very, it was very nasty towards me, and I, you know, and I, and I just thought, eh, you guys don't have a clue, man. And approaching it with that mentality, you know, that people like that, they might get a reaction. And they they were getting activity and the, and their presence shown, but they're doing the same thing what you just mentioned, you know. It's like, well, let's not jump to the conclusion that it's all Sasquatch. And I'm sitting here thinking, but it is, but it is. <laughs> and uh, um, <laughs> yeah, having the experience I do now, it's it's um, it's pretty easy for me to see when it is them, right? For mm -hmm. the most part, you know. I'm still objective as, as you know, I try to be as objective as I can. I think I've th probably thrown a lot of stuff in the garbage that, uh, you know, is authentic activity, but it's not been enough for me to uh, say that it definitely is. So a lot of stuff, I'll just toss it. Right. Okay. But um, yeah, I think that uh, being excited about hearing activity, I think that definitely pleases them and they okay. want to give more. That is exactly. I was wondering. Thank you. I had my too, and of course, I don't know for sure. It's just a. All right. Yeah, I don't know for sure either. You know, I'm just. Yeah. Right. But you're you're a you're somebody I would turn to if I wanted answers on this subject. Here's another one I wonder about. We're getting a little deeper, I guess. But do you think fear could bring out fearful situations? Sort of like the law of attraction. Are you familiar with law of attraction and all that? Oh, yeah. Stuff? You might kind of know talking about here then yeah you know if you uh if you're gonna be fearful then that's most likely what you're gonna get because mm -hmm. you're already in that fear mode right so anything that happens it could it could be a a small rock toss that lands near your feet and suddenly you're being attacked or mm -hmm. rocks are being thrown at you <laughs> and when it's <laughs> Maybe just a you know young one trying to show their presence or whatever, even an adult, you know. But uh, um, if you have that fear mentality, then probably just gonna look at it that way in a fearful way, right? Yeah. Um, so it's uh, yeah, I guess it just comes down to your frame of mind. Okay. I um, I definitely felt my metal was tested, as they say, like my limits but never in a way I felt was to scare me. You know what I mean? That's just my, I don't know. I don't know what exactly it was, but that was my interpretation at times with some things that happened. Describe the scariest moment you have experienced. Um, yeah, it's difficult. You know, the, at the beginning, there, like I said, there was lots of fear. So that first night in my tent, um, there was another night, there was all these snarls outside of my tent. Wow. Um, I don't know what that was for all I know. Could have been raccoons or something fighting over the food. I don't know. But the, the snarling that was going on scared the hell out of me. I, I didn't even look outside my tent. I was too afraid. There was the night the it was back in December 2012. One, uh, one of the adults was down the end of the bay there roaring. Mm. And uh, I I went to walk closer to try and capture audio better, and I I don't even think I took ten footsteps, and I was like, no, nope, to hell with that, man. I was too <laughs> afraid. It was just uh, you know, it was like a between a a, a lion's roar and a, a gorilla, just uh, very scary sounding. I've heard um, of you've recorded some of that. That's that's something. Wow. Yeah, one night I had. Uh, I assume it was a bear sniffed my tent wall right at my head. Mm. You know, so I didn't go back to sleep after that. I don't know if it was bear. I know I had their. Uh, I know I had Sasquatch presence at the same time, so I don't know what that was all about. Mm. But, uh, um, yeah, the you know just there's periodic moments, stuff like that happens. And... Gotcha. I noticed uh, the Fender guitar amp or shirt once in a while. Do you ever play guitar or any kind of music for them? Yeah, I got my kick-ass Marshall head back there. <laughs> Marshall. You know, I've, I actually have bought a, a, a nice bass native flute, which I've brought mm -hmm. a couple times. I know there's been a family member, Dwayne's family, that have played 
guitar there, wow. that sort of thing. You know, Dwayne plays music as well, so he's always playing that when we're on location, just listening to stuff while we're having our chats and that. So, that, you know, they hear all this stuff. And, and I actually have a, a rehearsal spot in, uh, in the city that uh, probably had about close to 10 years, something like that. And there's been incidents happen in the room. So they've shown up in that room there. And, and I've captured even a Sasquatch sounding grunt on my audio recorder, clear as day. Wow. You know, like uh, I would take my little Zoom recorder, you know, come out with a good riff or something and say, okay, you know, put the, let's just get a quick recording. And I remember one time I went to record something and the guys weren't ready. So I had hit record and they weren't ready. So I hit stop and it was a six second file. And in that six seconds, there's a Sasquatch sounding grunt on there. We, wow. There's been orbs flying around the room. There was one time that uh, the four of us were all, you know, in between jams. We're standing there having a conversation. You know, we're in this circle, just all talking to each other. And suddenly about four or five feet off the ground, right in the middle of us all, a dime, 10 cent piece appeared out of thin air, just dropped to the floor. We all saw it happen, right? Wow. So, yeah, there's been a few things that there's been a smell in the room that showed up. <laughs> we ended up calling it the shit monster. Um <laughs> That showed up one night. That was pretty wild. You know, just suddenly the room just stunk and then it was gone, you know, instantly wow. gone, showed up and then was gone. So, so they, they've definitely heard, heard the music. Okay. Maybe you know, I've never gotten any feedback on it. But. <laughs> Can you talk about that moonlit light when you saw nothing yet heard footsteps? I had a very similar experience. So there, there's been all kinds of times that, we hear or see the the footprints, right? Wow. Um, you know, we'll we'll scan the snow looking for prints. This is just the routine we do, seeing if they've left any any prints to show their presence. And and I, I remember scanning in front of my car at one point, nothing there. And I look again seconds later, and suddenly, or within a couple of minutes, suddenly there's a an 18 inch single footprint there. And, or we're standing at my vehicle, checking it over, looking for marks, and Dwayne's scanning the snow and, and tells me, don't step back. And suddenly there's a, a young Sasquatch print directly behind me where there wasn't one seconds earlier, that sort of thing. Wow. So, you know, there, we get a lot of, uh, a lot of times where they're standing right there with us, countless times where there's, they're right there with us, you know, and I, I know through either a vocal, uh, footprints or I get physical contact. You know, there, there's uh, a lot of incidents where they're, they're right there. It's, wow. it's very, uh, it's been very common actually. Mm, that's amazing. I could share mine if you want to hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, sure. I'd love to hear. I, over time, the whole things like being invisible, I accepted them later just through hearing about it so much. And anyways, so one night I, I didn't always do this, but I hit record and I said, I'm going to, I'm going to hit record. I'd love to hear something. And right away, right in front of me, not very far. And it, the thing that was funny was it was moonlit on my night too. And one just walked right across the leaves and I could see where they should be. And I could hear them. They were the same footsteps that I'd heard numerous times and there was nobody there. So I actually recorded that. It's, you know, not too loud. It's a little faint, but also my response um, at that time, I, my feeling was thank you for showing me this. So, cool. yeah. It's it, kind of we had an incident back here behind the house. Um, one of them walked in front of us. And just before it happened, I had heard wood knocks in my, only in my left ear. At the time, I, you know, I thought, it was from the woods, but when I reflect back on it, I'm quite sure it was telepathic because there was a lot of wind up in the tops of the trees that night. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, I had heard these wood knocks. I said something. Jen had never, she didn't hear it, but I, I had said, that, you know, like, did you hear those wood knocks? Something like that. There was three of them. And it's funny because they were in a pattern that I used to give way back in the beginning before I even started visiting Dwayne's, 
where I had my first close vocal encounter, I I would knock, give this uh, sequence like knock, knock, knock. And I would do that to announce my presence whenever I showed up there. And that was the wood knock given to me, uh, you know, back here behind the house. So we heard that. And then it was, you know, very shortly after, within seconds or a minute or two, one of them walked right in front of us. I heard the footsteps. There was three steps, a brief pause, and two more footsteps. So we heard the footsteps clearly. And this was about six, eight, ten feet in front of us at the most. Wow. And um, we heard the footsteps clearly and saw the leaves actually kicking up as he walked. And then wow. she saw his form, which, form, which I didn't, but she she did. And, you know, so there there was that too, right? Just uh, a showing, which was <laughs> awesome. I, I was glad she got to witness that. That's amazing. <laughs> wow. And I, I do recall uh, you mentioned how in hindsight you didn't really know what was happening way back when you would hear – or I think you might have even, I don't know if you actually saw the feet and presence being formed as made, but you definitely heard something and saw nothing and you weren't, I don't think, 100% sure what it was at the time. I I, I, I know what you're talking about now. Okay, now I can reflect back to <laughs> that. Okay, now I understand which, uh, which incident you're talking about. So this was way back um, when I had first been involved and I'd been visiting the place where I'd had that close vocal encounter. Yeah, I remember it was during the week. It was really late. It might have been like two o'clock in the morning. Um, I was with that other guy. His name's Mike too. And mm-hmm. and uh, we were on a main trail and I was checking out these prints that had crossed to see what they were, if they were like a deer hopping or whatever. Yeah. And then suddenly, it, it, and it was bright lit moonlight. I you know, didn't even need a flashlight. It was so bright. And suddenly we, we heard bipedal footsteps crunching through the snow right around us. And I was freaking out because, uh, you know, I, I was new to this and I had no idea that there was nothing there. And, you know, I <laughs> hear these blatant footsteps. Um, but now years later, I can reflect back on that and know that they were showing their presence and, and their abilities even back then. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> okay. Man, that's amazing. Another experience you mentioned with Chris Munch is how a rock was gently tossed and stopped by and hearing them walk around you guys, this one continues. I actually had a very similar experience. Uh, so basically the rock being tossed gently, hearing them walk around. Can you speak on this and your feelings surrounded it, surrounding it, like fear, joy, etc.? Yeah, so Chris uh, and I had gone up top, you know, where I would put my tent on Dwayne's property. So it was just us two there. And it was during the day and... And he's setting up his camera. I'm sitting in my chair, you know, about to be interviewed. The, that was the interview on the Fur and Cedar channel. Mm-hmm. And suddenly, like, his head was turned when this happened. You know, he's looking at his camera or something. So while well, he's setting that up, and, and uh, you know, a bit of fist sized rock lands on the ground and rolls and just barely touches my chair leg, you know, just showing that we had Neff's presence or, you know, one of his family members, likely Neff. And, so I, I knew we had one of them there. And, and, you know, it's a good feeling knowing we have that company, right? I remember when uh, Chris was uh, right after that, he, I, I can't remember, he was working on his camera, doing something, like I said, setting that up. And he turned around, he had his bag beside him, kind of behind him a little bit. And he turned to do something with his bag. And then and there was a banana peel on top. So they, <laughs> so they had done that as well, right? So, you know, to him... Uh, and that's 100% blatant activity to him because he knows I'm sitting right there. There's <laughs> nobody else there. I didn't get up from my chair. So there's, it's impossible that that banana peel ended up there, you know, unless it was placed by Ness family, right? So, wow. Um, yeah. And it was, it was all, it was all feel good stuff. So I love that. I, you just remind me, I did have an instance where I had a visitor to my campsite and I had been speaking about some objects being gently sort of tossed in this area. And you know what happened as I was talking about it. And I said to the other person, did you hear that? Said, yeah, and then I, I'm gonna try to, I don't remember exactly the rest, but I think then a couple landed and they definitely heard that. But um, what was really neat was one gently landed and actually hit the metal, their, their chair and made a little ding yeah. And it was kind of like 
All right, now that is pretty, I don't think there's any other explanation for that one. I mean, you know, then the last one comes in underneath the canopy and hits the pile of wood that was b directly below. So nothing could fall straight down and hit it. And uh, at that one, like, you know, or like there's, that one was tossed and uh, that was just, and it was, you know, for us too, it was a benevolent, friendly, hello type of thing. So I, I think a lot of these um, people, they get rocks and stuff tossed. It, it looks like their, their aim is incredible, but in, in actuality, they're right there. <laughs> they're only a few feet away from you. Probably right next to us. I, yeah. I didn't think that part, but you're, probably right <laughs> it's happened to me so many times and i you know i know right so mm. um like i've even had a incident where i'm checking my car and there you know i'm i'm standing there there's probably two three feet in between me and the car and i've had 10 blue marbles all appear out of thin air simultaneously and bounce off my vehicle but it wasn't to my left or right it was directly in front of me Unreal. Just bizarre what, what they're capable of, right? So. Wow. I heard about the marbles with Leanne, too. I, I had uh, sort of uh, communicated with her a little bit. Really amazing. That was an interesting thing because uh, I had I had gone to my spot where I pitched my tent. I was by myself, and I bought some marbles, and, and I pulled two out of the bag, and they were, like, bigger than regular ones, and they were both clear blue and... You know, they, were, they were so nice. It was like I wanted to keep them, right? And I think that's why they came back to me because I didn't keep them. I, I was like, no, I'm going to leave them as a gift. And and um, and then when I went back, I think it was a couple days or a few days later, marbles were gone. And then I had I was on the speaking with uh, Leanne and uh, up at her cottage. She had told me. I think she told me first about finding like the marble that looked just like that. And I, and I was like, holy smokes, you know, like I, I just had some disappear like that. And then I told her, tell me if you, you know, if another one shows up and she didn't realize that she'd forgotten that another one had shown up just, you know, days before. And she doesn't remember leaving those ones. So wow. she ended up getting two that were exactly like the ones that I left. So I think there was a, a connection there that happened. And, and she ended up, uh, she gave them back to me, and then obviously I, you know, here's one for you and one for me, right? Wow. You keep, you keep one and I keep the other. And <laughs> yeah, you know, can I prove that it was those same two marbles? No, but I'm quite confident it was. You know, uh, did I did I hear you say it probably came back to me because I loved that marble or something like that? I, well, I loved the marble and I wanted to keep it, but I didn't, you know, I, I ended up giving it as a gift and maybe that's why it was also my birthday too, when it happened. So that was, wow. you know, so maybe that was like a birthday gift as well. Right. You just reminded me of something that happened to me. Uh, gifting was something that I did. Uh, I didn't really have a rule book or anything. So I gifted treats uh, once or twice a day, pretty much every day for a number of months. And, um, I'm sure you can anticipate how that went. It was amazing. And there was one time where I had this box of, I don't know if it was something like cereal bars and it was something or maybe a type of granola bars. And I I, don't, I think I might've been in my car. Or maybe I was at the spot and I said, shoot, I, I meant to keep two of them for myself. <laughs> well, you know what happened the next day when I went there to the spot, there was sitting there that they didn't take. <laughs> In the middle of the forest, you know. Yeah. <laughs> they never took off. Yeah, I can see them doing that. Yeah. And I once I spoke out loud and said, you know, I, I really want you to have them. I, I did think that, but I did I wanted you to have them. They took them. And that little things like that, as you I have to tell you that they indicate intelligence and understanding language and Yeah. I had a basic mentor that was helping me with that. And at one point I said, you know, why would I eventually it, I just said, why would I say things out loud to someone who can read my mind? And they kind of explained it in a way that really made sense, but that's where I had kind of gotten with it, you know? <laughs> can you talk about how you were respectful with telling them that you were not trying to catch them on video or trick them 
and when recording audio, did you speak things to them or anything like that, letting them know you were recording or perhaps making a request of sorts? At first, I was doing old school methods, putting up trail cams and that, and 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 hiding my audio recorder and. Mm. Um, it evolved, right? Once I saw the intelligence I was dealing with, I evolved the situation. So I, I didn't stay at that route that I was trying to capture them on video or whatever. And <laughs> they, they, they would show over time, you know, the, the, they were always, they would always know where any of the equipment was placed. Always. 100% of the time. You know, you can't hide it from them. They, they know. So I just evolved with the situation and and I, I, I do always talk to them, you know, when I'm there and letting them know what I do. At, the, at this point, like, I'll leave a video camera on the table. I'll leave a camera on the table, sketch pad, chalkboard. Sometimes they give me uh, short little video clips, you know, a couple seconds or a few seconds of some ambiguous looking uh, hairy something, right? I don't know what. Wow. You know, I assume it's part of them, some of the stuff I've been given. But there's no, you know, there's no facial stuff in that, so it's it's something that is okay. I can put out there. They've shown me they can impose images, impose video, even freaking send uh, text messages and um, wow. like manipulate our phones and stuff too, right? You actually, uh, I just I was listening to a little of you to just kind of get refreshed on some things, and you mentioned how you received a voice message with a and it had no info nothing on it yeah and i had joked about something like that happening just the night before so it happened on the way home wow because uh i think what had happened was there there was a text thing that happened uh, sent to a friend of mine i had to send them i said that sorry that wasn't me <laughs> i didn't send that that yeah. text message it, you know it was just a bunch of scrambled letters and that and then that's when i had joked with Dwayne about them leaving a voicemail next and and then they did you know it was a vocalization just some crazy vocal and wow yeah and yeah my phone had shown no information nothing had never ever done that before and, or since so so yeah at this point a anywhere that I go I'll uh, if I'm putting audio out I'll always state what I'm doing and that I love their voice love to hear their voice you know mm. what this what this does and you know and i'm not trying to there's no camera with that so i can't see i can only hear you know that sort of thing you know that's really interesting i you just set off a light bulb for me i guess that's this is a bit of a freudian slip i spent a little squatch man greg yost i don't know if you've heard of him um yeah i i i know his name yeah a number of us saw glowing eyes together with him and but what's standing out to me and of course you know i Blowing, not not reflecting, but actually. Oh, blowing. I know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and but he would do. He would say, "I love your glowing. I love your beautiful eyes." Because he would speak out loud to them, "I love your beautiful eyes, my forest brothers and sisters," or something oh. along. With just said that. I was like, "Wow." He would tell them, "I love your beautiful eyes. Thank you." And so, wow. Yeah, I I do the same. Tell them, you know. Yeah, you know, they're beautiful. I love their beautiful voice. Yeah, and you have the best vocals, I think. Uh, you know, out there. I mean, it's unbelievable what you there's, have. There's so much subtle vocals that I have accumulated as well, right? That you know, apart from all the really, really blatantly loud stuff, um, there's tons of you know subtle stuff. Hmm. Did they ever do anything to let you know that it was them making a certain sound, like in Mimic Another Animal? The one incident that pops in my head right away is the wolf call. So I've recorded uh, like wolf howl sounds, very loud and very close in the area and distant. Um, and then one visit, Saturday afternoon, Dwayne and I were sitting in the living room in his, in his cottage and suddenly the loudest wolf howl right outside the cottage wall mm. it was so it was so loud it sounded like it was in indoors almost and we just sat there stunned looking at each other then it was over and 
And right there, it was like, ah, you guys make those sounds. Okay. Blatantly obvious it was them. So. I had a couple owl calls that were about eight, nine feet off the ground, without a doubt. Yeah, I've heard uh, fake, fake owl calls, fake wolf calls, and fake dog calls, dog uh, barks, that sort of thing. Um, I wondered. Um, do you feel that they protect you? If if I was in a life or death situation, uh, I'd like to hope they would. I I have. Uh, had a couple of life or death situations in my in my life that um, there was intervention there from an unseen force. Mm. Skydiving was one, and oh, I do I recall you talking about that. And the yes, they tried to pull your strap off before you jumped. And yeah. something pushed my strap off my shoulder. I wasn't moving. It just suddenly went. <laughs> and then uh, another one was car accident that stalled me just the two seconds long enough to save my life wow with a with a vocalization in my ear wow so was that them though i don't know no idea had things happen throughout my life periodically that shows me i'm watched i uh i have thought about your times that the fact that you're still here might be evidence that they do protect you like i said it seems like this situation has been purposeful yeah, you know, to to help evolve things, or um, just to uh, help, like I said, help dispel fear and myth. Mm. Seems that way. I could see that. Do you have any suggestions for an individual interested in making contact? I know that uh, or some people have binged watched my videos, and, and I think focusing on those vocals has helped uh, them. Wow. In a, in a way that, uh, you know, the Sasquatch feel that energy, you know, that focus on them. And they'll come mm -hmm. and check, you know, they'll come and check somebody out or, you know, maybe you'll have a dream where you see an eyeball looking at you or something hairy. Or maybe they'll show up in a dream state, you know, to check you out. Or um, I have a friend in Florida who told me she binge watched my videos. This is years back. And, and her and her husband that night heard Neff's vocals in their house. Whoa. And, and I believe her, you know, there's no reason for her to lie to me. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, talking to the woods, going, getting out into nature, putting that intention out, wanting to connect to them, putting that thought out, maybe leaving a gift, um, respecting nature, respecting them, and, and, you know, and how you approach, not like these knuckle dragging. <laughs> you know whatever yeah. big bigfoot shows where they're making all kinds of noise and yeah i haven't watched much of that no i would i did that but, whatever a decade ago right i got old but um at this at this point i barely watch anything on the subject you know i just uh it's i like to learn mm -hmm. if i'm utilizing my time i try to learn something yeah you know, so just uh, approaching with respect and putting out that intention, and yeah, focusing on them, focusing on their goal, uh, on their vocals, that sort of thing, I think can help uh, elicit uh, contact. Just looking into the subject, and it, it seems to me that they're watching. Who's who's watching? <laughs> they're watching those of us who are involved in this subject and, and selecting some for contact. I guess that's what it seems like, anyways. And I think too that. Um, you know, a lot of people still, whatever, have fear in that. Mm. And I, I think they just know our energy, you know, regardless of that fear. So, you know, you could still have a lot of fear, but they still make them, may make themselves known because they see your heart and your energy, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you get people that uh, take, for instance, uh, you know, there's one individual involved in that organization, uh, I won't mention who, uh, has, has been very um, nasty and, you know, very slanderous and just uh, caused a lot of trouble, right? You know, did his best to try to discredit. And I know he's he's been involved in this subject for over over two decades. He didn't have anything, nothing. Because mm. they know his heart, right? It's like, how sad is that, that you're so obsessed with the subject, but 
your intention and your your heart, you get nothing from them. Wow. You know, when when hey, you know, you, you can always turn it around, but uh, you want to approach it the way you you are like that, then you know, just uh, two decades and count and counting. Nothing. Something to learn for sure. Yes, my friend. Too, buddy. You are amazing, my friend. Thank you. That's it for the vocals. Anyways, I could, I, that almost gets me emotional hearing that. Yeah, I used to get pretty emotional way back when, you know, when it first happened and I'd listen to this stuff. I'd grown accustomed to it. But, uh, yeah, that was the first time he said that. And I, I actually missed the first time he, because he said it before that, right? He said, love you. And I didn't catch it or else I would have reacted. Um, I reacted on the. The second time he said that so that that was the very first time i heard him say that uh yeah. he he did say it back in march 20th 2015 he said we love you and that was um when they knew that that was my last visit to that cottage for some time they knew that oh. they knew that that was going to happen so they really gifted me that night and that was the first time too that the big guy had shown his 20 inch footprint so and he'd even shown his humor because he put a partial print on the snow on the back window of my vehicle um, showing his humor you know and he's like 12 feet tall that guy but um so like that piece there i can't remember which visit that was um but the one where you know he just basically said love you and um the, the March 20th one was we love you, which he'd never said that before. So that wow. basically meant his family or his people, or I don't know, uh, his family anyways. And, um, but that one there, yeah, that was pretty mind blowing to hear that. And, uh, you know, just the, the pitch, the tone of his voice too. And, and I can tell he was, you know, he was trying to get me to laugh. Right. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm laughing, I'm laughing at his laugh and then he's, you know, he's playing on that. Right. So that was, uh, that was very interesting as well. Mm. So yeah, that was, um, mind blowing stuff, man, really mind blowing stuff. Just, uh, and, and because of all that people, you know, a lot of people had a very difficult time accepting that as authentic, right? Cause nobody had ever shown a Sasquatch speaking English before, you know, and yeah. 
the only other comparable stuff before that was the Sierra sounds. And that was way back in the seventies. So, you know, it's now been what, close to roughly 50 years. Mm -hmm. uh, um, 40 years. If you know, you put this back a decade when it first started. So, mm. yeah. So to, to hear the, the language and the vocals and, you know, and, and there's still people putting this down, like, uh, you know, I'm not going to mention any names, but you know, Dude, uh, working with with uh, the Sierra Sound stuff, even even though he's saying how they vocalize on the inhale and the in breath or whatever it is, and yeah, and I, get all, I get all kinds of stuff like that. It's you know they they vocalize on both the inhale and the exhale, right? Um, mm -hmm. With a velocity that's just uh, fantastic. It's it's difficult or impossible, whatever, for a human to do some of the stuff that they can do. Um, mm -hmm. I have a lot of audio that's within the human range. Uh, I get a lot of people that's, oh, that's just a human. I always correct them. Human type. Because <laughs> they're, you know, they're assuming it's a, just a human doing that, right? But no, no, it's not, but it's a human type. So, <laughs> but yeah, that's, uh, that's a really cool piece of audio there that you played. Yeah, I, I wanted to listen to it with you. I, I just, I don't know if you watched it first and Cedar with Kate. What she talks about is that they told her that they love when she's in that belly laughing place where she can't stop laughing. Like she said, something like we would love it if you were like that all the time. What do you think of that? Yeah, yeah I could, I could see that. They are a happy people. I've, I've had the experience of feeling their energy, you know, where I've have felt their emotions as they were my own. They've given me that experience. Through, through the contact with uh, one of the children, you know, like actual contact where I was holding her hand in, in a dream state, but it wasn't a dream. It was, it was a contact dream that, you know, one of, I could sense a, my peripheral, a, an older female that had brought one of the kids to me, to meet me basically. And, and I saw how excited she was. She was so freaked out, but so excited. Wow. And, and the energy from her was just, it was, Amazing. So I can I can understand that how they they want us to to be in that that energy. Okay. I I can understand how it probably must be very difficult for them to be around a lot of humans and you know and the negative energy. I you know like I've I've had a lot of negative energy myself. It's, it's plagued me. You know especially dealing with a lot of the people throughout putting this stuff out. Right. So mm -hmm. always kind of. Uh, trying to evolve through that and just try to uh, dispel that i it's weird when the people closest to you it's weird i have, I have asked everything and i'm not trying to cut it off but i just so you know i thank you so much um and yeah, no problem my pleasure i can't wait to hear this again because i was thinking of looking at to see if we're still recording and but uh yeah we're on about an hour and 40 now almost yeah yeah yep yeah, 140. so you probably don't have anything to add i'm sure um i guess i could stop the recording now unless right. you to add anything but that doesn't mean we're gonna get cut off but yeah, I, you know i just uh this is my this is my life and this is my path. I'm so far down that rabbit hole at this point. I'm not going back. I can't. It's impossible to uh, yeah turn this off and you know. So I'll be. Uh, I, I just as I mentioned earlier, I you know just did my first in person pres presentation. So I, I hope uh, I hope I get a lot more of that in the future and. I, I can see that happening. You know, I believe that's my path because uh, they have given me the experience to, to talk about my, you know, to share what I've experienced with them. And, you know, it's, it's positive. It's all, it's all good. So, yeah, that's so cool. I was happy to see that. I, I saw cause I was, I feel like we might've spoken before you did that or whatever. And, or I forget the order, but I was glad to see that. I saw it on Facebook because uh, we became friends recently. <laughs> um, so, awesome. All right. So, yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. 
And, yeah, uh, no problem, Martin. I, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, more than happy to to uh, speak about my stuff and share that and help others. And... I am an open book too, uh, but I, it's not. I'm not hiding anything. But I, I wasn't coming to talk to you to talk about me. I, I was genuinely wondered about you. So, it's all good. I don't think you have questions. Uh, you've heard a lot. I can tell. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I guess we'll uh, we'll call it a we'll call it a show. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. And I uh, oh. hope that that goes well with that. Uh, if it's good for you, I hope it continues with the universities and all that. Yeah. yeah me too. Yeah. It, it's nice to to be able to speak to that demographic, you know, impressionable young minds and yes, give them something to think about. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I got told that uh, I, I helped some people, I convinced some people of their existence and, you know, others don't believe still, but whatever, that's their prerogative. I don't yeah. expect to change everybody's mind, but mm -hmm. uh, he did mention the, that they at least learned to approach an idea with non-judgment, which, you know, so it's a win-win. It's, it's a good thing. Definitely. Awesome. Well, thank you. I guess I'll, no uh, yeah, we'll talk again sometime or whatever, hopefully. Okay. All right. I think this is going to, I don't know what will happen when I hit end, but we'll find